Welcome to a very special edition of Cogent Conversations. Today, we've got a great lineup for you. We're going to present you with a demo day of five emerging technology companies that are going to show you how to leverage their technologies this upcoming holiday season to improve your performance and drive incremental revenue um, so that you can be competitive in your space and grow your business before the year is over. Now, before we get into the agenda, I wanted to tell everyone about uh, what the Cogent Collective is, what Cogent does, so that for the non-members listening, um, they understand what our role is in this conversation. So the Cogent Collective is made up of primarily marketing and e-commerce leaders from across various industries, primarily retail, um, uh, brand direct, and agencies. And our goal as Cogent is to learn what their business challenges are, right? And where we see common threads across the collective, we then go out and curate solutions and vet them out rigor rigorously to make sure that those solutions can follow through on the promises that they're making. What we love about the technologies that we partner with is that they're built from the ground up. So they're not pivoting from another direction. They are designed to solve the business challenges in our ecosystem today. So today's demo day is going to be focused on um, the holidays, right? We only have about six to 10 weeks left before you know code freezes, uh, media plans are locked in. So we wanted to present you with turnkey solutions that you could execute very quickly, um, hopefully without any sort of technical uh, challenges or limitations regarding website integrations. So without further ado, um, let's get into the agenda and then I'll make our first introduction. So we're gonna hear from five technology companies. Um, maybe you've heard of them, maybe you haven't. Uh, our first one will be Zambula. Zambula is a email marketing plugin for your ESP that helps you make your emails more personalized and create better experiences for your consumers through their entire journey, from the first order they make as they track their shipments all the way through your follow-up communications to make sure that um, you're building that one-to-one -one personalized relationship with them. The second company we're going to meet is Pebble Post. Pebble Post is a programmatic direct mail company that has revolutionized the direct mail space. There's no inventory needed, there's no upfront costs. They understand the users that come to your website and send direct mail to their home immediately so that you can get into the home and be part of the conversation where those decisions are being made. They also have some other products that help you discover new customers and grow your customer base. Uh, our third company is a digital out of home company um, Think of them as a DSP for digital out of home. They've connected themselves to every out of home digital screen uh, in the US and I believe up to 18 countries where you can go into their platform, plan a campaign and execute it within a number of hours, including uploading your creative and then optimize that creative very quickly. This is a process that in traditional out of home that took um, weeks and then the results took much, much longer and they've actually improved the measurement process as well. And then after Adomni, we're going to hear from Hunch, which is a social media creative platform that helps with creative personalization and localization, but also improves the workflow management of your creative so that you can scale your creative from you know, 10 or 20 or 30 pieces of creative to tens of thousands if you have a very large catalog and you need that um, based on the specific product, the weather, the time of day, etc without the need for additional resources. So this is a really exciting solution um, and, one, and one that we can't wait for you to see. And last but not least, for sure, is uh, Frequency and DAX. Frequency is our partner. DAX is Frequency's partner, but they teamed up to bring our members and our audience a special opportunity this holiday season. Frequency is a workflow management platform in the audio creative space. So they can help you from beginning to end with your creative development and personalization of that creative with localization, just like Hunch does in social media, they do in audio. And then they can work with your DSP or, or Spotify or Pandora, whatever, wherever you're buying your media, to deliver that creative on demand um, so that you get the right message in front of the right person. So that if you're in San Francisco and it's raining, you might get one ad, or if you're in you know, uh, Florida and it's sunny, you might get a different ad, uh, lunchtime, dinner time, et cetera. And then they partner with DAX to bring the media component in so that you can buy one package, execute it in a turnkey way, and then um, just let it, let it roll and, uh, 
and learn how audio can really help you uh, move your business forward, especially at a time where cookies are going away, IDFA is going away, tracking is becoming a general challenge. Um, there are better ways to reach your audiences because they're, they are everywhere. Okay, so now that you have the agenda, I cannot wait to get this started. So you know, keep the questions coming in uh, throughout the demo day, uh, after the demo day, and we'll make sure you get the answers that you need. After the uh, demo day, the, the recording will be uh, uploaded in its entirety, as well as individually so that you can find the content that you wanna hear again or share with your colleagues. So first up is Zambula, and we're gonna hear from Garen Hobbs and Robert Haydack, CEO of Zambula talking to you about how your email uh, creative can be more personalized and effective. Take it away, gentlemen. Uh, Robert, you wanna give us a quick intro? Yeah, hi, I'm Robert Haydock. Uh, we're gonna talk today about email and standing out in a crowded holiday inbox. We'll take a quick look at what our software does, and what it can do for you, and then use cases uh, that will help you win the holiday season. So as I said, I'm Robert Haydock, co-founder, CEO of Zambula, founded the company eight years ago. We started off in scratch off and reveal within email. And then about two years ago, um, saw the value in data and real-time images and updating content within email. Hi all, my name is Garen Hobbs. I'm the Senior Vice President of Strategy and Customer Success here at Zambula. This is actually my 22nd year in MarTech, having worked roles provider side, brand side, and agency side. Uh, I work with all of our current customers to help them extract the maximum opportunity, value, and ROI for platform, as well as redefine the limits of the art of the possible uh, with regards to personalized experiences. And that's an important thing to talk about. I, I know for a lot of marketers, personalization has been the primary strategy to differentiate the brand, meet rising or changing consumer expectations, and build personal relationships with customers as individuals. But there are also some very critical revenue and performance impacts that should be compelling more marketers to develop a deeper or more consistent strategy of personalization. Um, on average, the ROI of advanced personalization, and for the purposes of uh, our narrative, we define advanced personalization as that that's being driven by data. So think of this as getting beyond just table stakes, first name personalization. But the average ROI in that at minimum is usually 5x and as high as 20x for a lot of our customers. So uh, there are very few channels that are as effective, direct, and measurable as email. So this is a great tactic to adopt and otherwise accelerate what is already very good performance. Uh, when you do get beyond just those first name basics, we see an average of 17% increase in revenues alone. I mean, forgetting about retention, engagement, customer lifetime value, all those go up, but 17% increase in revenue is certainly nothing to be sneezed at. And when you're personalizing with real-time data, this is data or uh, data that updates content at the time of open or reopen, rather than this moment frozen in time at time of send, we see a 21% increase in revenues when personalizing with real-time data at time of open and 69% increase when combining this with some of the campaigns that you're already running. Abandoned cart, for example, is a really uh, great way to start. Three consistent personalized touches with abandoned carts takes 10% conversion all the way up to 69%. So really good reasons to get started and stick with it. And data is really at the core. And what we look at with brands we work with is what data is available to you that you might not be using already. You've made a lot of investment here. A lot of companies have invested in loyalty um, and that data can be used in real time to drive performance of campaigns. So it can come from behavioral data, cart data from the commerce site, uh, website data, user generated content like social posts and things. This is all data that you can bring together into the content that you're delivering and personalize it. We hear from a lot of our clients that, you know, a lot of times this data can be very difficult to access to leverage in meaningful ways or we see it most often uh, being put to the purpose of creating greater segment journey logic. Um, but very few folks I see are using this to actually drive content experiences. So in addition to giving marketers access and flexibility to leveraging this customer data, um, we can increase, or excuse, excuse me, we can um, simplify what is increasing uh, complexity with regard to segment journey logic by moving all of that decision logic that drives your segments and your journeys to actually drive individualized content experiences. So this is a visual example of that. If you look on the right-hand side, this would be the banner that Heather sees when she opens an email and it has her loyalty status at the top. But what you can do with Zambula is depending on what time she opened, what time of day, what her current statuses are, does she have a package on the way? 
it can deliver different content and that decision is made it made when she opens the email so in, on the left hand side you can see she might see a card abandonment uh, banner that says she has a couple items she might see a loyalty status or if she has a package on the way she would see that instead and moving this logic to the open is really the magic of zambula and then being able to design and create a branded look and feel with custom fonts that isn't normally possible within email. We've left a little Easter egg for you here on the right. Uh, you'll see it as smart banner. So honestly, there's nothing very new about serving banners and emails. Folks have been doing this for decades, but it's the complexity and the effort in doing so that is driving more and more customers to Zambula. So for example, you wanna serve any one of these five uh, example banners in an email, most often than not, you're having to hard code uh, those banners directly to the email or directly to the template. The smart banner allows you to take a single snippet of our code or a single pixel, drop that into your master modular responsive template or any template, and then use the decision logic at time of open to determine what gets shown in that banner. So you're only coding things once, and then the decision logic within the platform will simply uh, deliver those individualized experience as the context should determine. So Robert just described kind of the, the, the concept of the smart banner and showed some great examples. We also have the same notion for the body of the email itself called, you know, appropriately enough smart blocks. And so using these in combination makes it incredibly easy to bring deep programmatic personalization to every single email you send without burdening your data, creative or campaign teams to help with production. And just by default, this stuff is omni channel. So you may build the content for email, but you can also reuse that content. Um, and the logic that we drive in mobile or on the web. Yeah, it's, it, the, uh, the, the, the cross-channel play here is really important, right? I mean, different personalities are predisposed to engage on different channels. I'm more of an email and web guy. And of course, my kids are more sort of app and, uh, and, and, and push motivated. But rather than uh, trying to bring all of your audience to where your most valuable content is, for most folks, usually email or web, our capabilities allow you to deliver or continue delivering very individualized experiences in all the channels where your customers already are or where they prefer to engage. And we understand that the reason that folks focus on one channel or, or oftentimes deliver this inconsistently is simply the degree of difficulty or the, uh, the impact on resources to do so. Our, we're thinking very, very differently here. I mean, rather than personalization adding another level of complexity or production liability, Zubula brings many aspects of efficiency to your entire messaging program. Uh, for example, reducing your time, uh, the, the time to market for, um, from your idea uh, of uh, the ideation that you're coming up with for personalization strategy to actual implementation and launch. Uh, all of our things are template driven. They're very, very easy to customize to the look and feel of your brand and allows you to get these out the door in hours rather than days. Um, we also can improve that data accessibility, again, for uh, actually designing and delivering individualized or tailored content experiences rather than just driving segmentation or journey logic. We can connect directly to your data source or data sources and use any data value as a pass-through parameter, either as decision logic or as a pass-through in rendering of the personalized content. As we mentioned previously, you can also take a lot of this increasing journey or segmentation complexity and simplify that by moving all of that complex logic to the decision layer that simply drives the content rather than the journey. And then you know, by uh, getting you to market with these faster, which not only allows you to realize uh, return faster, but also get more programs out within a similar amount of time, you'll also be able to develop a, a better and faster book of learnings from this, understanding what works, what works best, what works best consistently, and why allowing you to apply those insights to any other aspects of your business. And this all works when you have an easy way to combine the data with the graphics and personalize it. And that's where our design tool brings in the data or API connections on the left-hand side. And you can just drag that content into your designs to create uh, the experiences and deliver them. And they'll be individualized for each person that opens and views that content. And again, rather than this being a moment frozen in time, you know, the change management is very simple. So I think we've all had one of those oops moments where we sent an email that wasn't ready or that we didn't intend to send or had the wrong offer or content in it. And I think as consumers, many of us have had the experience of opening up an email that might be several days old and the call to action is no longer relevant. No need to make changes at the template level. Any changes uh, to content or the decision logic that drives the content are made within the Zambula platform. 
those changes are then programmatically pushed out to your messaging, even those that have already been sent. We can reach into people's inboxes, change content to what is gonna be most relevant or most compelling in the moment, and that's the experience folks will have when they reopen the message next. And part of moving the logic to this layer at the presentation layer is having optimization available to you there. And this is kind of table stakes in uh, email where you want to test and you want to be able to optimize in real time. Moving traffic to the winning variant is the machine learning part of that. So standard A-B tests, you would split up the traffic, send, find the winner, and then move <clears throat> all the traffic there. With us, we're going to move traffic to the winner during the test and get to statistical significance in about a third of the time. So not only does that allow us to uh, render the winning version more quickly to the remainder of the audience, um, but it also allows us to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to see the winning experience. Since again, we can reach into the inboxes and change everyone to what is shown to be the highest performing iteration of your content. Now, uh, I know a lot of folks kind of have the question, why, how might this be different than the testing uh, or optimization I can do with, within my ESP? Great question. What we found through our work with our own clients is that ESP testing is, is most efficient and effective when using to uh, test out the efficacy of your segments or the journey path themselves. But when it comes to individualized content, we find that our testing suite um, gets to statistical significance faster and uh, allows us to uh, control more of the content experience rather than just the journey path itself. So Zambula testing for content, ESP testing for uh, journeys and segmentation. And, you know, I understand some of our audience may have used or may be using competitive solutions that appear to offer their similar capabilities. So I thought it was important if we take a few minutes just to walk through some of the distinctive and critical differences of, of Zimbula. And one of the major differences is this technology has changed over the last 10 years. Uh, the original technology was a screenshot technology where they would render it and then screen shoot it and then display it. And with Zimbula, we're doing that with vector graphics and processing the image much faster and much more efficiently. And the benefit for our customers is going to be lower cost and more functionality like animation. Perfect. Those are all uh, really good points, Robert. I mean, in addition to making it easy, we also offer, as we've kind of mentioned a few times, a shorter time to value, not just in terms of realizing the ROI and utilizing Zimbula, but for every single uh, project, campaign, use case that you'd like to get out the door. Uh, with a short initial implementation or a migration phase of just two to four weeks, so whether you're starting from net zero, or whether you're migrating from a competitive technology, it's two to four weeks from the time that you sign that paper to the time that we hand you something that is absolutely launch ready. Um, our average project time frame is only about 10 days from ideation to launch, again, allowing you to get these much faster than you likely are with even some of your, your regular promotional uh, messages that you send out without personalization. And so now we're going to dive into some examples and use cases. This is just a few to show you and give you an idea of what's possible. Um, really, the, the real benefit is digging into your program and understanding what you're trying to achieve. So this will be a quick uh, just run through of ideas that you might want to consider for holiday 2021. Awesome. Strategy is always my favorite part. Let's dive in. So real-time inventory, either personalized to each individual or based upon most popular items or any other general quality you might choose, great way to keep customers apprised of availability of their product during times of scarcity. And we know that there are still supply chain and logistics issues impacting a lot of you, um, you know, out there in the retail e-commerce space. Um, even in their desired size, color, et cetera, we, if you have that data, we can uh, write that against your inventory feeds and um, show availability relevant to each individual rather than just relevant to the product or the category. In addition to that, adding in shipping, off, uh, adding in, uh, shipping cutoff times not only provides that convenient reference for customers, but can also help to create a bit of FOMO as well, compelling shoppers to act while they still can. And here's an example of a store locator with buy online, pick up in store. And with this uh, use case, what you're looking to do is take a customer that's viewing an email um, and make sure they know what inventory and where they can actually do pickups. So you can show a map uh, of locations where pickups available and locations where pickup isn't available so that they can get a real sense of if they've missed those dates for uh, delivery, they can quickly find the right place to go pick up um, and purchase online while picking up at, at the store. 
And if you think about the previous example, a lot of these are most effective when used in combination with each other. So for example, if we think about available inventory or shipping cutoff times, if folks are wondering if they can grab what they need or if they can have it delivered in time, giving them the alternative to pick it up locally and showing where it's available and how it can be uh, procured or delivered is a great way to kind of calm some of the anxiety or fears that we all have as we approach the holidays and otherwise make it much easier to facilitate the, the closing of a purchase. Uh, speaking of package tracking, uh, some of you may have seen a few weeks ago, UPS issued a press release, I want to say it was about 10 days to two weeks ago, stating that during peak holiday season this year, they expect to be inundated with 5 million packages per day above their maximum capacity. It seems absolutely unavoidable that some shipments are going to be delayed. And package tracking with Zimbula, phenomenal way to keep customers updated to that current status and progress of their packages. In addition to powering your dedicated shipment confirmation emails, our package tracking uh, can be inserted into the smart banners we talked about earlier or in any of your other emails, uh, keeping customers apprised, creating a bit of that anticipation for the, uh, for the package or product to arrive, and most importantly, also reducing Wismo or where is my order calls to your customer service teams. And what we've seen with adding those types of messages to the top of the email is the performance of the entire email increases. And so these are just a couple other ones with card abandonment, like Garen mentioned at the beginning, um, around the 60 plus percent improvement in performance. If you can get three or more uh, impressions of the cart, that's another smart banner that you can bring into the mix along with uh, browse abandonment. If somebody's looked at a category or a particular item, making sure that that item shows up within email over the next few times they open an email. Yeah. And these are highly flexible. There's a lot of additional data value uh, that we can add to even a simple uh, abandonment uh, treatment such as this. So for example, we, we, in this case, we're showing the exact product that was abandoned. If there are multiple, we can show multiple. We can simply show an image of a cart uh, branded that simply shows the number of items in there. Uh, but in, in this case, we could have also added the reviews and ratings from the website. Uh, we could show their size. Uh, there's a lot of additional uh, uh, individualization that can be brought to and increase not only the value of these, but the actionability of them as well. Speaking of actionability, uh, one of my favorite types of messages during the holiday seasons are the deal of the hour or deal of the day emails. They add that sort of natural, very fun layer of gamification and anticipation to uh, you know, your normal pr promotional messages. Instead of sending a new email with a new deal every hour or how often you refresh your offering, Zimbula allows marketers to pre-program those hourly or daily specials using our decision layer. Uh, meaning you can cut your sends to maybe three emails rather than 12 per day if you had a deal per hour. And so that will serve the purpose of still keeping your message towards the top of the inbox uh, without exhausting or overwhelming your customers with the number of emails or by seeing your brand impression too frequently within too short a period of time. Um, at the assigned time, our platform simply reaches out to all inboxes and changes the deal to the current offer. Um, or even if the offer that you have right now has sold out, <clears throat> something that we can trigger off of data as well and swap that offer out with something else immediately. And so the result of this is customers can always click through to a timely and relevant experience rather than having the product you're interested in is sold out. I think it's a crappy experience we all hope to avoid both as marketers and consumers. And then our last example before we wrap it up is a countdown timer. This has been used very broadly, uh, but when it's pulled into a smart banner with a call to action, um, it can be much more effective. And so this is an example where you're tying in the Cyber Monday sale with the sale ending um, and the timer is right above the button. And so this is the type of, uh, you know, thoughtful uh, use of a timer that we can help you with. Uh, and we're excited about the holiday season and really showing, you know, what's possible with animation and personalization this year. Yeah. And again, we're showing a rather general example here. We know countdown timers are very effective for everybody. We can always increase the level of personalization by merging in first name or any other data point uh, that you might have to otherwise increase the individualistic feel of each one of these banners. Uh, now, I know we've covered a lot in a very short time, so we wanted to make ourselves available to answer any questions or chat through your current and proposed use cases. Um, additionally, we're happy to chat through your holiday strategy and planning, help you prepare for the upcoming changes brought by iOS 15. Uh, we're also offering a free trial of our package tracking capabilities through the end of this year. So feel free to reach out on that. Um, lastly, oops, excuse me, um, 
Lastly, uh, we have a webinar coming up in a few weeks to explore the use of kinetic uh, elements in email to drive better messaging content experiences. So we hope you'll join us for that. Uh, we do have a quick Q&A, but if you'd like to reach out on any of these items here, please feel free to reach out to our friends at Cogent. Uh, they'll be happy to answer any initial questions or otherwise put you in touch with us uh, directly. Awesome. And uh, now we'll move to our Q&A. If there are any questions from the audience, I know we had a couple that were sort of pre-submitted uh, as well. Yeah, we have a few questions. I just wanted to comment a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, points that you that you guys made as a consumer. Uh, package tracking. Um, I ordered a piece of furniture I don't know, two months ago. I'm still waiting for it. And the communication has been terrible from the from the the company um, and I've had to call multiple times I've had to email multiple times and just the time and resources that they must take to respond to me um, and I'm sure other customers uh, is, is, is really time consuming meanwhile I've been getting email after email multiple times a day at least once a day with more products to buy which I haven't even received the, the product that, uh, that, I, that I purchased so the, the consumer experience there could, could absolutely be better um, so we have three questions. Um, the first one was, can I use multiple data sources in the same content block? Yeah, that's a great question. Actually, one of the things that distinguishes us from, from other seemingly similar solutions is you absolutely can. So package tracking is a great example. So we can take the API feed from whoever your carrier couriers are, use that to pipe in the, uh, the actual package status information. Um, and or destination information. Um, but we can also bring in uh, any data points from your database of record or whatever your source of truth is. So we can combine that with things like first name personalization, the name uh, or type of products that were actually or product or products that were ordered and otherwise uh, enrich the package tracking with all that other available data. And that's true with any of the other elements that we might power as well. Excellent. Um, so someone, someone's asking, they're saying, can't I just use HTML to, to create smart banners? You can. You can also commute in a Model T, but I, I probably wouldn't recommend it. Um, Robert, you want to take this one, actually? Yeah, so one of the problems is uh, when you're in an email team and you're trying to HTML code these in, uh, it's a lot of work and effort. With us, you drop in a pixel once, and then you can manage all the changes from our platform. Um, and in addition, you can have the content change at the moment of open instead of sending out a time capsule um, at the point of send. Excellent. Before I get to the last question, if, uh, if everyone could take a, take a shot at the poll question, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, last question is, can I still use these capabilities with iOS 15? A hundred percent, you can. Now, I want, I know a lot of folks have been, uh, there's been a lot of anxiety around kind of these upcoming changes. One of the very first things that I'm encouraging folks to remember is that um, although it's when we look around us, it seems like everyone has an iPhone or, or, or an Apple device, uh, the number of people opening uh, within Apple Mail actually comprises the minority portion of most of your audiences. The numbers that we've seen on average anywhere between 40 and 45%. So we're still recommending that you optimize for the large, for the majority of your audience to have that full functional experience. And uh, we have also developed the ability to detect which emails are being opened on Apple devices. So we can immediately within milliseconds redirect them to um, an elegantly degraded experience that is functional within uh, Apple iOS 15. There are certainly gonna be some, some, some uh, um, uh, limitations. Uh, but uh, we, we were pretty confident our workarounds will uh, look really great and continue to deliver uh, really amazing experiences for people. Excellent. Garen, Robert, thank you so much for your time. Um, to the audience, obviously, if you have more questions um, that, we didn't, that we didn't address here or anything arises, please send me your time and email, and we'll cover that at the end of the webinar as well. So next up, we have Daniel Hoffman from Pebble Post. Pebble Post is a programmatic direct mail solution that puts your brand in the home where purchase decisions are made. Daniel, take it away. And Sean, thank you for the introduction. Really appreciate that. And as Sean mentioned, my name is Daniel Hoffman. Uh, I've actually been at Pebble Post for just about five years. And during my time uh, at Pebble Post, I've been primarily focused on building new relationships with performance marketers who are really looking to test into direct mail uh, for the first time, or really looking to modernize their current direct mail efforts, uh, really at scale. And, and what we've done at Pebble Post is we've invented a new channel that we've coined uh, programmatic direct mail. 
And what we're doing is really bridging the gap between the direct mail world and that of the digital world. And as a lot of marketers happen to know, direct mail can be a very effective way to communicate with consumers. It's a way, a great way to be able to provide a lasting impression. And it's a great way to be able to hit people at home where ultimately a lot of decisions and actual uh, intent does happen in consultation, I should say, should say as well. But where direct mail is actually lacking uh, really as a channel is at times with its efficiencies or inefficiencies and executing a direct mail campaign uh, for the most part, it could be an extremely laborious process. It is. It requires a lot of resources for marketers and brands. It can be very capital intensive. It could also take several months to ultimately see actionable results. And on top of that, uh, most companies are really just not utilizing data to its full potential when it comes to being able to execute any kind of direct mail campaigns. And this is actually where digital has prevailed, I would say, over the last couple of decades. Uh, the most part, the the most powerful digital media channels out there, uh, in the most that they're really the most they're actually the best direct response I would say drivers out there right now. And part of the reason is because that they have amazing shopper behavioral intent signals. They are very timely in being able to communicate with people, and when they're looking at their data holistically, they're able to drive quick action and very effective ROI at that. Uh, with this all said, digital channels have experienced quite a bit of ad fatigue recently. People are definitely being oversaturated to a certain degree. And when it comes to actual content on social or digital, it could be somewhat short-lived at times, and it could have very quick impact uh, at that. And this is where we really sought out uh, to bridge that gap. We wanted to make sure that you're connecting the best of these both worlds by providing consumers something that's very relevant, very respectful, and hitting something, somebody with something very timely at, at the actual home itself. And I'm gonna wait for this slide to load because there are a couple elements to it. But at Pebble Post, we are very much a data-driven company. We've built a platform based on a proprietary data asset that we call our Pebble Post graph. That's actually diagrammed on this chart here. And our Pebble Post graph actually sits at the heart of our platform. It's really at the nucleus, uh, we like to call it. And it links anonymous consumers to unique households. And it connects billions of intent and transactional single signals every single day. So we've actually scaled our own graph over the last six years to actually have 100% coverage of the US, US. And when we're talking about the US, we're connecting uh, these anonymous users actually directly to U.S. households uh, to help make sure that we could actually be able to effectively hit these people at home. Uh, we're also collecting billions of intent signals within the graph, so it's not just an ID graph, it's also an intent graph. And these intent signals are playing a huge role in allowing us to observe uh, and really be able to create propensity models. And the propensity models that we're creating as a company are built on machine learning, and these models are being refreshed on a daily basis because it is data that is being run in-house as well. And this really encompasses kind of our ethos as a company. We are very, uh, we're a very data-driven company. We've also invested a ton into data science and we wanna make sure with these models, we are focused on sending mail specifically to consumers that are, actually have a high propensity uh, to convert at that. And the other thing that the graph has really enabled us to, to do is to really build out a sophisticated integrated workflow where we are able to actually, we are able to take on really all the printing and logistics of a campaign at that. So we are, at, we are the ones that are finding the addresses, we're scoring users, we're API, APIing our files to our printing network, and all this is actually being done on a daily basis. And from there, we're actually printing on demand every single day. So we're never actually sitting on inventory or any kind of excess at that either. And we're getting in home about two to three days after these intense signals that we are picking up. And then to wrap it all up, we're able to track this all back to ROI in real time. So very much like our uh, brands are used to tracking their digital channels, they could track that in a very similar capacity with direct mail now through us. 
And really this last bullet uh, really higher, uh, highlights that we are very much a performance channel. We are a direct response channel. Our goal as a company is to be able to drive better uh, performance by actually sending out less mail at the end of the day. So if we're able to hit the right consumer uh, with the right piece of mail at the right time, hopefully the ROI is gonna be there with having to do less at the end. At, at the end. And as I flip to really the next slide here, this highlights uh, really the products and solutions that sit under this proprietary graph that I mentioned on the previous slide. So our graph helps to power these three products and all three products hit all, th all stages really of the consumer life cycle. And going from left to right on the screen, our retargeting solution is identifying on-site uh, on -site non converters. So consumers that are actually not making a purchase Every single day, we're actually able to delineate those customers from prospects. We're able to model out those audiences so that we're actually stack ranking them and scoring them based on that propensity model. And then we're, at, we're sending that mail on demand every day. So it's arriving in home in a very quick, timely fashion. Moving over to this lookalikes product in the middle, this really highlights our top of funnel. Uh, product and it helps fill a lot of people that might not be well aware of uh, the brand that we are talking to. And what we're doing with our lookalikes product are running actually two different sets of models here. So we have both an online and offline model that helps us to score audiences extremely effectively. And just to highlight our offline model first, the offline model is taking into account a lot of demographic and psychographic data points which is very, very normal if you're sitting in the digital world or even the direct mail world, none of this would be uh, atypical. You could easily buy a list from a DMP or maybe even by looking at your CRM to actually analyze uh, psychographic and demographic kind of data points. Uh, where we actually really have an edge in performance and differ is the, off, uh, the online component. So from an online perspective, we are taking that data that we are leveraging from the graph on a daily basis. And we're looking at shopper behavior and actual propensity to convert around other brands and actually understanding brand affinity and shopper affinity and capitalizing on the timeliness factor of that to be able to send people a piece of mail that might not have heard about your brand before. And then just moving over to that graph mail piece, this last section here, our graph mail solution is our most versatile product that we actually do have, uh, where we are actually leveraging uh, a lot of the data that brands will give us to help actually build out sophisticated lists. But, so this could be as simple as helping to run CRM oriented campaigns. It could be as complex as them looking at data sources from the outside that they're purchasing and helping to upload those to actually drive performance from that. We could be doing email appends for lead capturing. Uh, et cetera. There's a lot of options that GraphMail does fulfill, and it definitely could capture all the way from the top, mid to lower part of the funnel of a consumer life cycle. And you're probably asking, how does this all kind of relate to holiday? So this is obviously a big time of year uh, for us. We partner with a lot of brands who are capitalizing very much on our flexible pricing model and very much on the high traffic demand to their digital storefronts during these peak time periods. Uh, and what they're utilizing us for is to be able to drive very effective performance uh, really at high scale uh, during these time periods and at a cost that isn't necessarily skyrocketing uh, compared to other channels that they might be accustomed to uh, during the holiday kind of frenzy for lack of better terms. And the other item here, so kind of on the left side, the, the visuals here really kind of lay out how hands-on we'd like to be. So as a team, we are extremely hands-on and being able to craft very agile plans with our brands. And the visual kind of shows uh, some blueprints that have really worked well based on our product stacks in the last page when incorporating these into different time periods throughout the year. But we definitely want to make sure we're developing uh, solutions that are going to fulfill the needs of our brands, whether that's hitting people a, a couple of weeks before Black Friday or making sure that we are very much in tune with getting in home and into the mail stream between 
Cyber Monday and shipping cutoff dates, for example. And with that, we like to get very custom, uh, always open the conversations. If you want to connect directly with, with Sean and Tom or my email address is here as well. Happy to, uh, happy to entertain that and I'm happy to answer any questions as well. Thank you, Daniel. And while we do some Q&A, uh, please take a few seconds to answer this simple yes or no question. Um, Daniel, thank you for that. Um, we have several questions here, but I'll just uh, hit on a few. How does Pebble Post track ROI and success? Or how, I should say, how does Pebble Post's clients track ROI and success? Yeah, great question. So we've built a solution uh, on our side called Transaction Match. And it's a process where we're just doing actually a, uh, an address to address match, but we've automated the process to normalize addresses so that we could take in transactional data, match it up against our send data. And it gives us a holistic look at being able to really check omni-channel kind of conversions at that. So we have a full breadth of um, actual performance and on top of that, we're able to get nimble in the sense of being able to look at incrementality and put proper holdout groups in and measure in a very consistent format as well. Interesting. So that's a nice, nice sort of alternative to, you know, the lack of cookies and IDFA challenges. It's, it's true incrementality. Um, okay. You know, given, given the holidays and everyone's strapped for resources, what does setup and testing look like? Is this something that requires a lot of hands from, from the clients or, um, or is this sort of an easy -er, um, testing scenario? Yeah, but once we get kind of set up in on our three main parts of implementation, it's very simplistic. So we do ask JavaScript to be on site so we can start capturing that intent. We're ingesting customer files so our segmentation is very clean. And then we do ask for creative, which we send over templates and provide guidance and it's very quick to get up and in regards to being able to test, we are very much a test and learn platform. We are, uh, we'd like to be very hands-on, I would say early in the process to set it up more or less as a proof of concept kind of test and really show the ability to scale after that. And holiday is always a great time to test into uh, really seeing our capability stack at that. Excellent. And then in your presentation, you mentioned uh, flexible pricing um, as one of the sort of benefits for brands during the holidays. How is, how is Pebble Post priced? Great question. So our, our pricing is completely all-inclusive. So we try to be uh, very, very simplistic at that where it is down to a cost per piece. So very similar to that of digital. And we try to make sure that we are um, really addressing our pricing to make sure it is uh, very much backing into a clean ROI for our brands. And at that, we want to make it very, um, we want to make it very easy for brands to be able to plug in with us where we're not asking for upfront commitments necessarily like you would in traditional direct mail. At the end of the day, our business model has very much been built off of a cash flow positive in the sense that the brands that we're working with are actually investing returns that they are getting from us. So we tried to make it very much almost like a digital model in the way that we actually priced out the business. Excellent. All right. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, I'll stop sharing the poll questions. All right. So next up, we have Jonathan Gadai, who is the CEO of Adomni. Adomni is revolutionizing the way out of home is planned bought, executed, and measured with their digital out-of-home DSP. Jonathan, take it away. Hi, everyone. Hope everyone's doing great. Um, Sean, Tom, thank you for having us here today. Um, my name is Jonathan Gadai, and I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders of Adomni. I'm excited to share with you guys today some holiday 2021 strategies and some of the you know, cool new things that are now available to everyone here uh, on Digital at Home. So first and foremost, I've broken down you know, what we wanted to cover into um, a few different topics. Certainly want to really make sure everyone here kind of walks away from this session with a clearer picture of what's available um, and really why Digital at Home matters for holiday 2021. 
Uh, we're going to cover five topics that a lot of digital marketers just don't know about programmatic digital home. And uh, we'll look at a couple of use cases. So we'll do some case studies. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a, I'm a regular massage person. And through the pandemic, uh, when that was taken away from me, I discovered this product, Theragun. And it's one of the few products that got me through the pandemic. So I figured uh, it'd be cool to just put together an actual uh, example with a product that I personally like. Theragun is not a client of ours yet, but um, we're gonna do one e-commerce brand and we're gonna do one uh, brick and mortar brand. So you can actually see, well, what would it look like to activate a campaign on programmatic digital at home for this holiday? And then lastly, we'll, we can open it up for Q and A. So first, just a little bit about us. Um, Adomni is a pure play programmatic DSP. Uh, we were founded in 2015. Um, we are also the exclusive ad tech platform and partner for Uber's new ad business called Uber U, Uber at home. Um, we offer both a self-service planning and buying tool as well as managed services for agencies and brands. And whether you are doing national campaigns or hyper-local, we work with uh, companies and brands of all sizes. It's a completely open platform model. So literally within minutes, you could go to Dom.com, register an account, and be instantly planning and their at a home, uh, where it's long trained and uh, sort of expensive onboarding process. Uh, you know, over the last six years, we've launched over for digital home campaigns. Um, so we've seen a lot over that time period and can lend our expertise uh, for anyone who might be new to digital of home or new to programmatic digital of home. Um, there's, there's definitely some nuances to it and, um, and it's a really exciting time. In terms of why digital of home, firstly, uh, in a simple statement, right now, especially coming out of the pandemic, people are spending more time than ever out of their homes. And this is a dashboard that, that we regularly watch, which is the Apple mobility trends. And it compares pre-COVID to, which is January 13th, 2020, to as recent as yesterday. And across the US, walking is up 70%, driving is up 51%. So everyone here is probably a consumer who can appreciate this. Being locked up for the past 18 months has been rough on a lot of, on a lot of us. And now we're you know, using our newfound freedom to go to bars and restaurants, to go to sporting events, and every step of the way, there's a digital auto home screen there to, to reach you. From a data perspective, there's a few key stats that we like to point out. Uh, out of home is one of the largest awareness channels there is, especially now with how much time we're spending out of our home. So it reaches 90% of US residents. It also is a very powerful influencer of consumer behavior. And so this is a Nielsen study that showed that 66% of smartphone users after they saw that digital billboard ad or other digital home ad ended up taking a measured action. And that includes things like going and looking something up online, accessing a coupon or discount, visiting a website. And so the idea is that the big screen is gonna make you aware of something, drive the discovery, and then the small screen is gonna take it home. It also is something that pairs really well with Google search, 40% uh, of users exposed to an out-of-home ad end up doing a Google search for that particular brand or product. So really huge engagement to drive search. And then for social, 38% of adults surveyed in the US visit a, a Facebook page um, or, their, or, or post on Facebook re relative to whatever that ad or product is that was shown. And speaking of Facebook, on Facebook's website, they, they posted a study that showed if you just buy Facebook, you have one set of efficiency, but by actually layering on digital auto home as a combined offering with Facebook and, and Instagram ads, you'll end up seeing a 15% efficiency and popping out of the, the screen here. If anyone wants to see that, um, this, is, this is on the facebook.com site. Um, some really strong data here that backs this up. So if you're thinking about your holiday, Facebook and Instagram promotions, you absolutely wanna be thinking about how you can also complement that with digital auto home. I also want to point out that in this presentation uh, on the top right, for those who aren't necessarily live and are seeing this later, we've added a QR code. So if you're interested in actually learning more about that one particular slide, 
just grab your phone, snap the QR code, and you'll be able to go right to that website. <clears throat> All right, so now shifting gears from why at a home where there's huge audiences and it drives results to the five things that we don't, a lot of digital marketers just don't know. First and foremost, digital at a home is now programmatically at scale. Every single DMA in the US has significant coverage. And we also on the Domni platform have 18 other countries where you can launch a campaign. Overall, we're looking at 60 billion monthly impressions from the largest media owners in the space. Lamar Digital Billboards, Clear Channel Outdoor, Uber, um, you know, bars and restaurants, gyms. So 465,000 screens can be instantly programmatically purchased right now. And so that's something that a lot of people just didn't realize. And when you think about scale, it's not just billboards. A lot of people associate just large format roadside billboards, but we have screens on all these different touch points in the consumer journey. And so when you think about how do we get the attention of consumers at a time where there's so much fragmentation of attention at a home, which is where we're spending so much of our waking hours is available now in a brand new way. Second, audience targeting. We've partnered with a couple of different uh, mobile location data companies. Place IQ is our primary when it comes to audience uh, targeting. So if you're trying to reach a very specific audience, we are applying Place IQ's recent data to the screens that are on the platform to enable you to have a campaign that is shown on the best screens that index to your specific audience. Also, ease. You could literally launch a campaign. Before I'm done with this presentation, you could have a campaign built, planned, and launched. Five minutes is all it takes for you to identify which ge geographies to advertise in, build the plan, uh, upload your creative, launch it. And so a lot of times people think about a home as, as a channel that's just difficult to access, to plan, to buy. Well, programmatic digital home has, has changed that. Number four, retargeting. We've partnered with LiveRamp and Mira, where all of the digital home screens in the platform and all of the ads that are shown are being fed with timestamped play logs to Mira, who then pumps it over through LiveRamp to your DSP of choice or to Facebook. So if you wanna be able to not only reach audiences in a powerful way, but also retarget them on their mobile phone after they've been exposed, this is available now. And then as for number five here, measurement. A lot of, one big myth is that you can't measure at a home. Well, that's changed with mobile location data. And so we can look at things like foot traffic visitation lift, if you're a brick and mortar you know, <clears throat> brand, website visitation and conversion lift, mobile app KPIs. Um, we can also now, especially in the pandemic, have actionable advanced QR codes. So you can see an ad, see a product, scan it, and take them right into the conversion funnel. And for this, we, we kind of walk through the differences between standard QR and advanced QR, where it's, you know, it's, it's been simplified for the execution and the type of reporting you can come out, get out of it is, is really, really powerful. So, you know, bottom line, this is not the out of home that you probably think about or a lot of digital marketers think about from the old, the old days. Um, it's truly digital. It's planned, bought, measured like digital. Um, and I'm going to just show you really quickly. I know that we're you know, short on time today, so I don't, I won't be long here, uh, but check this out. So if you go to adami.com and I have this kind of set up here where we're not going to click on all these things, but if you click on the login and register, it'll take you right into our DSP. You can click new campaign. And then just like Facebook, you have the full universe of connected audiences that you can reach. And then you start filtering. So if you want to reach certain metro areas, certain zip codes. If I'm Theragun, what I just did is I did a point of interest search and I imported in massage locations and gyms that have audiences that theoretically would be interested in a self-massaging product. And after doing that, it then changed it from 460,000 screens to 5,700. And we're only showing ads within one mile from those locations on these types of screens that have my audience. So gym goers, shopping mall visitors, digital billboards in the tops of Ubers. 
and I can come in, I could set a budget and a, and a schedule of any time frame. There's no minimums. I want to do it for one day. Or if I'm Theragun, I want to do the week before Black Friday all the way through Christmas Eve. If, if you're an agency, you can add margin. So if you want to add a 15% markup to the cost of the media, you can easily do that. Here's where we entered in our target audience of who we're trying to reach. And literally save, upload your ad, save, launch, and your campaign can be running within an hour or two. You can also easily share the campaign plan. So if you're a brand manager, you want to share with your colleague. If you're a, an agency, you want to share with your clients. Click the share button, and it's going to ask you to, to just put in a summary, decide who you want to send it to, and, and literally, you know, it'll build out a web page like this that says, here's what we're trying to achieve. Here's our strategy. This is what the pricing is on a bundled all-in CPM price. Here's a map showing all the locations that are included surrounding the different stores. And so this kind of thing that used to take weeks literally can be done in minutes. And whether it's you doing this on your own or having us you know, help perfect the, the ideal plan, um, you know, this, is, this is available right now. And if you look at last holiday, Nestle did a campaign for Starbucks for their the Nespresso capsules. And they put advertised around Target stores within a very short mile, you know, five mile radius. So tops of Ubers, digital billboards, 42% lift in in-store visits of the exposed audience compared to the control audience. So it works, it's available, and um, we would love to talk to you if this is of interest. I, uh, I'm gonna close by just putting up my, the slide here and, um, and saying, you know, feel free to reach out to me directly. Here's my email or scan uh, my QR and go right to my LinkedIn. I'd be happy to have a conversation with you or route you to the appropriate person uh, at Adami. Excellent. Thanks, Jonathan. I'm going to launch a little poll here for Adami as well. Um, I'm with you on the uh, Theragun. You can't see me right now, but I'm holding mine right here. Keep it <laughs> on my desk. Uh, big fan. So I'm glad you used that one. Um, one of the questions that came in was about the, uh, the Nielsen study. Is that publicly available? It sure is. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we, we can, we can share that as well. Okay. So I'll, I'll get that to the person that uh, asked that question, but if anybody else would like a copy of that study, um, send me or Tom a note and uh, we'll make sure you get it. A um, couple other questions, Jonathan, does, does programmatic digital out of home have the same flexibility as programmatic digital? It sure does. So you can do daily budgets, you can do day parting, and you can be buying on CPM that can be changed really at any point. Excellent. Um, you showed you showed some pricing there in that, that Theragun example, but how does how does digital out of home pricing compare to digital advertising? The typical CPM across all of the four hundred sixty five thousand screens is about seven to eight dollars. Um, there are some placements that can go as high as twenty, and there can be some that go as low as four. Um, but the other interesting thing is that 99% of digital at home is video enabled. Um, so you can place a 15 second MP4 video file on a large format screen for eight to $10 CPM. Excellent. And then um, obviously you showed how quick it was to plan a campaign, but is there a creative approval process that has to be, has to be vetted out with the media owners? How, how does creative work? It works the same way as Google or Facebook, where you, you would upload your creative and it, it'll go through a, a moderation process. Um, on our side, we release it to the media owners in an automated process, and then they click a button in an email. And once that approved button has been clicked, your, your ad starts streaming within minutes from then. Excellent. Well, that's all the questions we have today, Jonathan. Thank you so much for your time. That was, a, that was an excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Take care. So next up, we have Ziggy Rakovic from Hunch, where they personalize and scale your social creative with ease. Ziggy, take it away. Hey, I'm here, guys. Hey, thanks, Sean, for that introduction. All righty. Thanks for everybody that's holding in after an hour of great presentations. Uh, it's great to be here. Thanks, Sean and Tom, for putting this together. Uh, it's crucial to um, sort of look at what's ahead 
to the holidays and sort of plan out. So um, today we'll be talking about how do we dominate this holiday season with performance creatives and what are sort of the impacts that are uh, that creatives can have on holiday performance. Uh, quick background. We are, I am CEO of Hunch and we are a company that's a uh, global Facebook marketing partner. We work with lots of different brands across the globe for specialized for advertising technologies. And we build lots of different solutions, creative solutions across board for lots of different industries. And, you know, typically the reason why we exist and one of the sort of topics that we're discussing today is what are we actually heading into this holiday season, right? Uh, I think we can all agree that uh, there is a massive growth of online commerce that's happened over the last, you know, 12 months or 18 months. Um, so that's one trend that's definitely affecting what's going to happen this holiday season. The other one is, you know, that we're shifting to mobile first content. If you look at Shopify's sort of purchasing behaviors of consumers, 70% of purchases, let's say in November of last year and the previous year was 70% of that was actually on mobile, right? So when you have the most products you ever had before online and you have the smallest screens that you have ever had before online, you essentially get, you know, new sort of attention challenges that marketers are facing, uh, that are faced with today, right? And if they don't solve for these challenges, um, they'll see higher costs. They'll see higher CPM, CPAs on Facebook um, and they won't get the attention, right? We, have, we know that we have less than two seconds to grab somebody's attention, right? And so the question we ask is for this holiday season, how do we grab that attention? In other words, how do we stop that scroll on Facebook, Instagram and all the other channels where our buyers are at, right? And so one of the answers is that, you know, 71% of you know, shoppers say that personalization definitely increases the likelihood of purchase, right? So the question is, how can we increase that likelihood of purchase? How can we increase, you know, a, a personalized, contextualized and relevant sort of product offer for our audience? And so what Hunch does and what we've worked with lots of different brands on, uh, and we'll go through some of the cases and examples today, is how do we use the existing brand creatives uh, and all the assets that a brand has? How do we combine that with data uh, and performance data? to drive that sort of creative production process and deliver those creatives at scale to those audiences that are in the market for the product that we have, right? And sort of the common denominator is how do we do that without hiring, you know, 20 more people this holiday season to get that done, right? So, um, so at the 10,000 feet level, what we do as a company is we essentially unlock all of the data that you have, whether it's product catalog data, creative assets, locations, whatever that end factor is, that you have, we unlock that and we pack that into these data feeds or catalogs that we combine and connect to our studio where we then render and create thousands of different images and, and videos. Um, so if you have 000, a product catalog of 20,000, we can generate 20,000 videos on the fly uh, or images or 100,000 images so forth. So where we're different than most is that we both create uh, all the uh, images and videos and then we also send them off to Facebook and Instagram you know, at the right time to the right person. And on the back end, we have an optimization engine that looks at what creative actually works with what audience and what's actually getting the clicks and what's driving the perfect purchases. So at the at the sort of high level, it's you know unlocking the data you have for this holiday season, uh, unlocking the creatives you'll be using across board for the holiday season, and then localizing that for all the audiences and personalizing those holiday offers. And so once we have you know the platform and process set up um, and uh, you know, the ability to, to target those audiences with the correct products. There's lots of different solutions that you can build, lots of different playbooks that you can sort of enable. One is an on-brand sort of contextualized experience for all, across the entire customer journey from top funnel to bottom funnel, including images and videos for all the different products. It's combining also, you know, like Google Analytics data. So looking at what are sort of the, you know, top products that, perform, that are performing. What are sort of the hidden gems in your catalog that's driving sort of the add to cards and that we can go after look like audiences of and sort of creating a system of faster creative testing. At the very core, the question is, how do you do that without hiring, you know, a massive creative agency or creative team to do that? So we as a company have developed a sort of a creative decisioning engine that looks at the catalog data, it looks at the product, but it also looks at the data, the performance data, and also CRM data or audience data. And then on the fly, it creates those images and videos based on certain conditions being met. So is this a best seller? Is it a top 10 product that's being sold or add to cart? Let's add that to a lookalike audience in video format. Is it on discount? Show the discount. Is it a new collection? Show the new collection. Is it a specific collection? Show that collection. And then we extend that data for, as the earlier speaker talked about, urgency data, which is like, how do we drive direct response? How do we drive clicks? How do we get that attention? So adding you know, the three days left, two days left, one day left, 
buy this product at this price. And so we do that at scale. So if you have a million products in your catalog, we will add this urgency layer, right? To every single product, we render it and send it off to Facebook. So if they looked at product number 455,000, that product will have two days left on sale, right? Uh, and then we do that also, also for, you know, different audiences, you know, male, female, or, and, and so forth. So we, as a company, work with you to sort of embed and plan and set up these campaigns. Then our technology does the production deployment optimization of all of the creatives and all the sort of media buying that's happening on Facebook and Instagram, creating these sort of, you know, operational efficiencies in getting that performance. So we can quickly ramp up to 240 different video ads. So here's an example of what we would call placement asset customization. So creating one set of design concept and having 10 different products that are top performers with testing different purchase motivators, right? Is it the free shipping that gets you? Is it the special offer? Is it, you know, the return promise of perfect fit uh, for all the different formats? So you can see that you can quickly ramp up to lots of different you know, videos that can be costly if you do it manually. Here's an example with one of the telcos and how we created sort of a, uh, a combination of brand and performance, right? Where we took their existing assets, which was a TV ad that ran, that had different, you know, characters running. So we did sort of a Netflix style testing out what, you know, actor or what persona in that particular video gets the actual clip or video through. Right? And then infuse the product catalog data in the end for that specific audience, for that product, for that person that they were looking at. In this case, phones and planes. And so for different audiences, for different, you know, brands, it's different sort of data and creatives that are done. For travel, for them, it's destinations, it's locations, it's personalizing those customer journeys for people that are looking at specific flights and then looking and personalizing those images and videos for those flights. Um, sometimes it's it's hard, but combining brand and performance has become pretty straightforward on Facebook, right? How do you combine those brand elements with performance data and performance creative? So with this example with Qatar, which I use because Qatar has very strict sort of on-brand elements, we were able to create thousands of different variations based on images from locations and destinations to drive a 5X return on Facebook for an airline company, which was pretty amazing for, uh, for Facebook. Uh, here's another example uh, for how localization works and how actually it drives performance. Uh, we have on the left, if, you have, if you're in a specific location like Sweden, you would get hit with, hey, uh, fly from Stockholm to, the, to Belgrade. If you're in Helsinki, fly from Helsinki to Belgrade. And this would be localized for the language, for the price, for the currency, and so forth. So oops, moving on. So here's a full funnel approach for uh, L'Oreal's Urban Decay. And this is really important to note because this was all done uh, dynamically through, you know, creative automation. On the left-hand side, we see sort of top funnel looking at uh, bringing their creative elements to life, but also infusing the top performance into this video template that's sitting on the left. And then in the middle, we're retargeting them, getting the, getting the attention in the first two to three seconds. And then all the way down to the right, it's continuing that on-brand customer journey for that specific campaign, the holiday campaign with, you know, bottom funnel VPAs that are on-brand. Uh, we can, you know, extract review data, um, anything that can actually move the needle in terms of click-throughs and engagement, we can add that on top of it as a layer to all of the creators in the entire catalog. So what are some of the examples when we talk about holiday offers? There's going to be, you know, quite a few different holidays that are coming up. How can your brand personalize those holiday offers for your audience? So here are some examples. We take that catalog, as mentioned, we have product name, product category, call to actions, price, discount prompts, whatever you have as a data set, right? Whatever you have as, as, as a data point, we can use that to drive that creative production process and combine it with the sort of creative layering process. So instead of, you know, doing dynamic ads with just the white background, we can now put them into any sort of creative element format um, with specific layers for that campaign. There's a slight lag just a second so uh one of the playbooks for this holiday season for example for black friday is uncovering sort of the hidden gems that are sitting in your catalog right you may know that are like there's top five or top 10 products that are working but how do you know product number 89 is not driving that sort of at your cart of purchases so what we do is we develop playbooks where we combine google analytics data or any sort of performance data just data to see what actually works and then automatically add that in a sort of branded Black Friday style template for all of the images in that collection. Um, we can promote collections uh, based on specific, uh, you know, triggers. So if it's on discount, show the discount. If it's, you know, specific product collection, show that product collection in that format. So promoting entire catalogs and products. So instead of, you know, having one, you know, creative to say, hey, all of our uh, this entire collection is 10% off. Now we're sort of presenting all of the different products that are in those in that collection for that audience that's looking at that. So 
we can do that both in image and video format. So now creating videos, unlocking the, the ability to be creative and test lots of different call to action. Does the video with the price work? Does the price with the discount work? What actually drives those different you know, conversion points is something that you can test fairly easily. Here's an example of adding that one day left, two days left, three day left, for, you know, get these, um, you know, uh, get this product at, you know, last chance to get. Top collection promotion. Uh, one of the things that we work with um, uh, quite a few companies is, you know, figuring out what actually gets the, you know, people to stop the scroll, right? What is something that's going to drive that? So here's an example that we did where we actually infused, you know, tens of different types of products into a very fast moving video. We know that on, on, on Facebook, as you're scrolling through the feed, you know, brains super fast, right? So actually in the first two to three seconds, we need to communicate the brand, the product, the offer, uh, and get that attention. And then so Black Friday, when we look at it as a sprint, it's really testing lots of different creatives for lots of different, um, you know, product collections. So in both an image and video format, this is a fake swipe out format where we're communicating again on brand sort of, you know, sales for all the different products. Um, one of the things that uh, brands are doing is testing lots of different lifestyle content. So it, all, all, every single brand has some, has some form of organic content. Either you're working with an influencer or you're working uh, or you have other lifestyle content, using that content and repurposing that content um, in high sort of intent, you know, videos on Facebook works really well. And then infusing that with product, you know, information actually drives that conversion. Here's an example of segment asset customization for a CPG brand for P&G. It's essentially personalizing this holiday season. Like, you know, this product is for, you know, it's an older killer, um, but then you buy that in different sort of, you know, scenarios. So um, is it removing, you know, odors of pets? Is it, you know, for kitchen lovers, whatever it is. So segmenting, personalizing, contextualizing that product offer for that audience is really something you should be doing today on Facebook at scale. Um, obviously working your top performance, knowing what are the top performance last seven days, not last seven months, right? So figuring out how do we connect Google Analytics data and say, give me the top 10 performers from this specific location for this specific product and infuse that into an automated video to go towards lookalike audience and grab those new purchases. Uh, Valentine's collection promotion, again, it's testing different templates, you know, for, for his and her collections with different products in different formats. So product shuffles, uh, single product video slideshows, these are all different formats you should be testing at scale with different products in your collection to see actually which one actually gets the best sort of uh, conversion. And then if you have locations, uh, one of the things, one of the playbooks that we build is sort of you know, promoting store locations. So combining sort of uh, location data with product data. So we can achieve something like, you know, grab this product, uh, combine it with Google Maps data and say, get this product at this location that's near you. Okay, so I'll stop it there. Um, there's Definitely, you know, performance, creative performance works. If, uh, as you've probably heard somewhere else, it's really 70% of performance today on social and on Google actually um, is reflected on how much uh, creatives work, right? So 70% of that is attributed towards creatives and testing. So we've seen uplifts in both, you know, revenue and ROAS um, and also uh, campaign automation in terms of, you know, operational efficiencies. And I'll stop it there. Oops. Where's the poll? Um, thank you, Ziggy. Appreciate that. I want to launch your poll question here. Um, if the audience could take a few seconds to answer that, it'd be appreciated. Um, thank you, Ziggy. Um, just a couple of questions. Um, does Hunch quite, I mean, you, you showed a lot of different examples there, right? A lot of different ideas with your current clients. Um, would you say that it requires more people or, or fewer people to execute these types of campaigns? Yes, that's a good question. I think it really depends on the playbook, but generally speaking, uh, the team does not scale, right? So it's really about setting up the playbook and getting grabbing the data into the right you know, data sheet um, and scaling that creative without actually scaling the team. I think that's you know, sort of the holy grail is how, you know, today marketers are really sort of tasked with you know, doing more with less, right? Squeezing the lemon, as they said, in particular you know, due to COVID and everything else. But in general, you really, you know, want, you know, personalization works, right? So everybody knows that personalization works. The question is, how do you deliver personalization in an operationally efficient manner? That's the question, right? So how do you do that without, you know, hiring 10 designers or hiring creative agencies or hiring media buying teams that will achieve that level of personalization? And so that's where, you know, companies like Hunch come in because we essentially bridge that gap, right? Between what you really want to achieve and what drives performance and what you really can't today with the current resources you have. And that makes sense. Um, and then the last question is, 
Can you help us build customized creatives for our brand? Yeah, so we have lots of templates that can be used out of the box. Um, for holiday season, we typically work with brands and give them customized, you know, branding based off of, you know, whatever the current campaign creatives look like. So definitely our, you know, our onboarding uh, is pretty, uh, you know, sort of handholding in terms of looking, you know, making sure that data feeds are correct, the catalogs are set up, the campaigns are set up, that the creators are on brand uh, for the holiday season. So we definitely step in and help you create those. Uh, and then you can scale that and use in different product catalogs, and, you know, collections. Excellent. Cool. Ziggy, thank you for your time today. Appreciate it. Thanks, um, John. We'll, we'll be sure to follow up. Um, next up, we have Pete Jimison from Frequency and Chris Blackburn from DAX. Together, they, they make audio ads personalized, scalable, and easy to buy. Take it away, guys. Thanks, Sean. So we've got basically one minute to fly through our- No, 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 you're good. You're good. You got, 15, you got your 15 minutes. You're good. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just kidding around. Um, well, great. Uh, so I'm going to just jump in real quick. I'll share my screen and uh, I'll introduce myself. So I am Pete Jemison, CEO of Frequency. Uh, I've been in the audio space for about 10 years now. Uh, first started as a, an agency, worked hand in hand with Spotify very closely, helped build out a lot of the creative suite of products that they sold. Uh, across the globe. And then we started building out our own technology and launched that, which is frequency. We've been around for the last about four years. And uh, in this presentation, we've partnered with DAX. Um, so you can run frequency audio across any publisher that you so choose, Spotify, Pandora, et cetera. Um, but we've, we have a partnership with DAX and we have a couple special packages that we're offering and bringing to the Cogent Collective here today um, that you guys can take advantage of. Uh, so I'll do a quick walkthrough of frequency. So we're essentially a creative management platform for audio. So thinking about what we just heard from Hunch and taking that personalization and adding in the aspects that are needed for audio. So production of audio ads. So how do you find the vocal talent? How do you get the audio produced? Do you need sound effects, music beds, things of that nature? Delivery of those ads. We have our own um, you know, DCO system. So you got to think about like flash talking, but for audio and then measurement. And we do the measurement all the way down to the end level creative. And so what we're trying to do is deliver the right audio message at the right time. Uh, and we use the same type of data triggers that you would see like Hunch was mentioning, weather, device, location, time, content. But we also can use additional data that you provide as a brand or other third party information. Um, you know, We're doing something with sports scores right now. We can do things with stock tickers. So there's a lot of opportunities that exist. And just for some thought starters for dynamic creative in the audio space, we run a number of campaigns uh, around geolocation, you know, proximity based off radiuses of the specific store locations. Uh, we do a lot of things around, you know, desktop device versus mobile, and then time of day versus day of, and day of week. So changing the creative, thinking about like mealtime with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, or day of week, thinking about, you know, at night versus the weekend. You can really start to see performance of how your audio is, is performing across different publishers uh, and at the different times of day, days of week and provide optimization during the course of the campaign rather than at the end of the campaign. I'm gonna provide, uh, show you guys an example right now of a campaign we actually ran with DAX uh, for Subway. Uh, and this was heard, basically they were changing the creative across 70 plus markets, uh, many different iterations of creative uh, each week, depending on the type of promotion of subs that they were offering. And then they would change the creative based on the weather. So if it was raining, they were highlighting a promotion to use their app. Welcome to the Subway app for the Subway app. How would you like it? Oh, the weather's bad today. Let's do Storm Chaser. You bet. Weather conditions have deteriorated. And I'm very hungry. But don't despair. I used the Subway app on my smartphone and ordered ahead. Now I can pick up my dinner quicker and get out of this weather. I hope that was my stomach. Subway, make it what you want. App and online ordering available at participating restaurants. Please allow 15 minutes for pickup. So in that example, you could hear him call out the app. You could hear the rain. So all those different effects, that the sound effects that are played in based on that weather. Um, and we do this all the time with a number of brands. You can see the uplift that occurs uh, based on the fact that it's contextually much more relevant, right? You have that recall ability for the ad based on the you know, much more personalized content. Uh, so we can you can traffic your ad with frequency across any ad server or DSP that exists out there. You can also go direct 
to those publishers. So if let's say you want to do it with Spotify, or you want to do it Pandora, iHeart, or Dax, you just go ahead and say, we're going to use the frequency system and provide them the VAS tag. So it's a third party VAS tag. Everything is handled um, and served via our system. Uh, and we're using macros to make those decisions in real time. The measurement is uh, between first party and third party. So we collect everything again down to the end creative impressions, companion band reviews, click through rate, listen through rate, and then frequency itself. Uh, and then on the third party tracking, you can provide any pixel you want on the back end of the VAST tag. Uh, you can look at you know, the audience uh, banner impression pixel, click out pixel attribution, so in store traffic or conversions, and then listener inside ID, which is something that DAX offers that helps really look at incrementality and additional like, you know, geo matching. So I'm gonna pass it over to Chris, who's been kind enough to uh, do a presentation on DAX and their offer. And then we'll talk about specifically the packages that we're bringing uh, to the Cogent Collective. Thanks, Pete. Hi, everybody. My name is Chris Blackburn, and I lead revenue and business development uh, at DAX. Uh, I also have a career that has uh, always been deeply seated in the audio space, more recently having worked at, uh, at SoundCloud, leading their ads division. Um, if you want to keep on going, Pete. What you've been hearing about from Pete is really about how important context is in your messaging. I think we can all agree about that. Dynamic Creative has you know, a storied history and display uh, in video, and it's really been about time for audio to be reaping from the benefits of you're making sure you're reaching the right audience and that audience is actually receiving a contextually relevant message for you. The role that DAX plays in this equation is we represent some of the uh, most premium peer play and live streaming audio publishers in the space. So, you know, after Spotify and Pandora, there is a long middle tail of audio listening across a, a wide array of, of premium listening environments. On the pure play side, we define pure play as on-demand listening. So Audio Mac, TuneIn, Spotify, Pandora fall into this pure play of app-based listening. Live streaming is how we define the digital streams of terrestrial players. So people that really love listening to the radio on their mobile app, mobile web or desktop, really like listening to uh, live streaming audiences. And what this all sort of combines to be is a very large differentiated audience, I'm gonna keep going Pete, that is also really importantly, not duplicated with Spotify and Pandora. Um, 110 million monthly uniques at scale. And then what's really critical is that you make sure you're not hitting the same consumers over and over again. So this is one of the chief problems that DAX helps solve is ensuring that you as advertisers are not reaching are reaching, are reaching new consumers and are not hitting the same consumers over and over again. I would guess if I like pulled the audience right now, most of us would be probably paying for one of these services and not receiving ads. And the reality is that Spotify is just incredible at converting to subscriptions. So you really wanna be thinking about what is the ad supported audio ecosystem looking, looking like and where is the consumption happening? The truth is, is that it's happening across a wide array of publishers. Um, after that piece around ensuring that you're reaching new audiences. We want to hone in and make sure that you are actually not wasting any sort of impressions with your targeting approach. Our approach to targeting is to take a unified approach to first, second, and third party targeting. We work with Nielsen as our preferred DMP, but we're also able to uh, ingest you know, your first party targeting segments through a Xander or a live ramp. After targeting, you know, our, our second sort of tent pole at DAX is really about measurement. So Audio does deliver outcomes. Audio is traditionally thought about as more uh, upper funnel awareness or reminder tactics. Uh, through the right technology, um, with listener insight ID being one of those technologies, you're actually really able to prove out that audio plays a much more important role in more middle and lower funnel tactics. And this has really been proven out by a, a wide array of advertisers and you know more direct response uh, focused agencies like, like Veritone and ad results that we work with, where if audio is not delivering the outcomes that these partners are looking for, like then it would be cut, but it's really not. This is one of the largest areas of growth in media right now. To sort of append that uh, measurement piece, DAX created Listener Insight ID as our proprietary measurement technology. We also work with every single third party uh, measurement. So it's, you know, we're not just sitting here grading our own homework, but the technology is really transformative. What it does is it is a measurement solution for audio built with audio in mind. What I mean by that is if you were trying to measure success of an audio campaign through things like clicks on a banner, you're kind of missing the point that audio is a non-visual medium. What Listener Insight ID does is that we pixel the audio creative, we pixel a client site, 
uh, we create a look back window of you know, two to four weeks. Uh, and then we instill a fingerprint on every single listener that we know has heard the ad. And then we're able to then attribute that the media exposure led to a result once the consumer takes an action and goes on that site. This can be combined with footfall traffic, uh, tracking technology like Cubic or Place to prove the, you know, that we were driving people to retail or to take a test drive of an auto. And of course it works wonders in e-commerce where you can really start to follow the listener. Once DAX has sent you that listener, you can start to follow them down the consumer funnel on your website. What kind of promotions did they click? Who was the listener? Uh, what were their demographic and psychographic information? This is just kind of a taste, if you wanna keep going Pete, about some of the types of rich insights and results that combining the right content audiences with the right technology can actually deliver for you. And Subway was another great example of that, you know, using really creative weather triggers and location device settings to really customize the message here. Um, in this case with Unilever, they're launching a new uh, Dove product with specifically in Target stores. And we combined listener insight ID with a, a, a sales uplift technology called ANSA to really be able to prove out that our media was making an impact. And it truly was, you know, we were able to see who were taking actions, what were the audience insights, the demographics of those that were taking actions and showing up at the stores to buy the product, what was the return on ad spend, you know, as a key sales insights and, and so much more with that. And so finally, you know, to kind of go back to where we started, you know, which is really critical and in our partnership with Frequency, which we value quite a bit, is that, you know, content is king, but a very close second to that is context. You really need to be thinking about what is the context of my conversation with the consumer. Um, and during the holiday period, when messaging and media is more cluttered than ever, I think you want to really think about the context piece being a heightened aspect even more where you're putting the right message in front of the right the right customer. So with that in mind, you know, it's a great time this year to be thinking about how you're engaging your holiday shoppers and every little bit of extra context helps. So creative ways to be using weather, device, location, time can really set you apart. Um, your device piece, you know, your conversation and tone with someone listening to audio via a smart speaker in their home setting should be probably different than you know the, speaking to a consumer who is commuting on the way to work or actually at work or in school or in or what kind of environment that you're in. Um, you know, for retail, often using time of day uh, reminder tactics or weather tri triggers, um, especially combined with, with sort of geofencing to drive people into retail, is a really important tactic. And we see actually drives up engagement and conversions by two to three times. So, with that in mind, we put together some very thoughtfully and aggressively priced um, packages that combine the power of the frequency technology against dynamic creative and context, context, context. I think everyone should take a shot every time I say that with the premium audiences and listening environments um, that DAX represents exclusively to, to give you the rich context and actual engagement uh, of, and insights to break through the clutter and make a real impact with your holiday packages. Um, we have a lot more information to share around these. Uh, we have a lot more information actually on how the technology works with frequency, how uh, the actual publishers and audiences that DAX as a company you know, represents. So you can really get to understand what is unique and interesting about these listening environments. But I'll turn it over to Pete DeRap. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Chris. So as, as Chris mentioned, there's a lot of more information that we have uh, that you can uh, see actually in this deck. So if you wanna reach out to Sean or Tom, uh, one of my page changes. Um, there's a publisher one sheets that go overview of each and every one of the publishers that uh, DAX represents. And then there's some more case studies if you guys want to kind of dive into, you know, how audio can be effective for you or a brand that's similar to you in a, in a specific vertical. Uh, and then of course, we're always available. So, you know, feel free to reach out. Um, Sean and Tom can provide our contact information. Um, and we're doing a, a lot for the holidays. And you know, we have many examples that we've, we've run in the past, um, specifically around like points of interest, um, products, um, you know, with call outs with a time of day matched up, you know, with it was it Black Friday or before Christmas. Um, so, you know, you let us know, um, we can always be there to brainstorm with you and um, work on the creative with you. Back to you, Sean. Thank you, Pete. Appreciate it. Let me put up your uh, I had two for you, two polls, but we'll put up one um, while you're doing that. I think it's important for context, just for, for, uh, for Cogent to state that um, uh, Frequency is our partner and DAX is Frequency's partner. And 
although frequency has a great creative product, the audio space in general is new for a lot of people. We wanted to come up with a way um, to make this turnkey for brands and agencies to try uh, trial into this medium, right? It, it can seem overwhelming um, and, P and, and DAX can help simplify um, the process for you. Um, and it's a great way to really stand out with all the noise that's out there. Um, just a couple of questions, Pete. Going back to the very beginning, um, talking about workflow management, um, how early can, can a brand or agency leverage frequency services? Um, starting with like voice talent, script writing, like where, where do you guys come into the picture? Yeah, often we recommend that a brand starts with some type of script just to give us kind of the guidelines, right? Uh, we run that through our system. We've got a number of vendors that we work with. Uh, we can clean the script up or we can actually write the script itself. Uh, but then essentially we're, what we're going to be doing is getting you guys in a schedule where we have vocal talent that's cast. So we'll provide uh, talent that matches your brand and what you're going for. Uh, there's a form that you can fill in that basically identifies each and every factor. So male, female, um, you know, what age range, uh, what's the type of personality that is coming through in the, in the voice, uh, along with music bed and sound effects. And so as that information comes through, we then take that, pass it over to the specific vendors that you agree to work with through our platform, and then the assets are produced. And the assets can be produced very quickly, you know, within two to three days, or if you're doing the more of a large scale dynamic campaign, you're talking probably two to three weeks um, with approvals. Uh, so that's, that's the process and the production side. And then, you know, as soon as the assets are produced, it can be dropped into the platform and a vast tag can be produced within minutes um, and then trafficked out. So it's, it's really very quick. Uh, so if you're thinking about something last minute and you've got some leftover budget for the holidays, uh, you know, this is something that can be done. You can get your, dip your uh, toes in the water. As, as Sean mentioned, you know, the reason why we brought ta DAX to the table here is because they're a great partner for kind of getting started in audio if you haven't done it yet. And a great partner if you've been doing audio with say with Spotify, Pandora, iHeart and you want to expand your reach. Um, and the CPM is quite effective. Great, and actually as a nice segue to the last question, which is how does frequency help my scale um, in audio if I already work with Spotify? Do I need to create separate campaigns or can I leverage um, the creative for all my campaigns? Sorry, I was trying to decipher that question. Yeah, yeah, so the, 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 the great thing about working with frequency is that the creative can be consistent across wherever you run the audio. Um, so if you wanna do it across three or four publishers, you can use the same creative, keep it consistent and you're measuring it in one central place, which is also uh, you know, very much valued since you're gonna be getting formatted, different formatted reports from each one of those partners. Uh, and sometimes they don't provide all the information that you may be looking for. Great, thank you, Pete. Well, that brings us to the conclusion of our event. If you have any additional questions or you'd like to learn more about Cogent or any of our presenting companies, please send me an email at sean at bcogent.co or tom at tom at bcogent.co. The recording of today's event will be posted on our website soon. So look for an email uh, once that uh, occurs and take care and always be cogent.